Ragged Edge Radio broadcast, Russ Dizdar. Our main website, shatterthedarkness.net on the web. Or you can go to theraggededgeradio.com. Get the live notes today. I've added pages. We're talking about Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. I talk to the Russians. I love the Russians. And possibly some of the greatest revival in human history will occur in Russia. Uh, But what about the uh, satanic ritual abuse? What about the chosen ones in Russia? What about um, the godmen, small g, in Russia? It's on page 23 in the notes. It says this, Then war broke out. In heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they, Satan, the dragon, the angel, their fallen ones, they did not prevail. Nor was there a place for them in heaven any longer. The great dragon was cast out. The ancient serpent called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. Uh, Let me comment. The sum total of the whole world. That's the goal. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Revelation 12, then woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Um, Those that don't have the Spirit of God, those that do not have that presence and power. Vulnerable humanity. They're being layered right now all around the world, um, counterfeit spiritual, uh, the decadent morality, the layering and the shoving of all humanity into the um, battlefield of hate and chaos and conflict. Today, the Ragged Edge Radio broadcast, this is Russ Dizdar, glad you're here with us. Very special broadcast, we pray, that God stretch out his hand over all of Russia. We join in uh, the Great Commission in praying for uh, just tens of millions of Russians to be saved. God to pour out the Spirit of the Lord all over Russia, around the world, in your world right now. Our families, all those around us, may God stretch out his hand that none should perish, that God would save. May God bring great signs and wonders, miracles, presence and power of the Spirit of God to save lives powerfully and to heal bodies and heal emotions and heal the brokenhearted and to open the eyes of the blind to set the captives free. That's what Jesus does. That's why we're here today believing that God can initiate that work where you are right now and initiate revivals. Oh, that's that's needed right now. United States, um, well, 90% of the believers, uh, if you don't know answers to prayer, don't know the power of God, don't know soul winning, don't know healing, don't know deliverance, uh, then um, that's subnormal. And the good news is you can come right out of that. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I mean, right now could be our own personal revival. Fan into flame, you know, what God put into you. Paul, by the Spirit of God, tells Timothy to do that. We're going to talk more about that today as we get in again to the counterfeit out there, the big war. I mean, that's the big war. The big war is what's going on right now all around us. Now, that's the unseen but absolutely real. That's the cause those are the um, the supernatural strings behind the underworld puppetry of the the Illuminati, or call them what you want, the Mysterium, 2 Thessalonians 2. That system that will spring out, Revelation 13, final New World Order stuff. And there is, a, just for all of us to know this, all of the military folks and intel folks and our friends and folks in China and those that recon the show are going to say to everybody that um, it, it matters. Regardless of everything else, reject any political view you think I hold. But I, um, I'm telling you that the God of heaven pursues you. God loves you. And there's only one way of salvation that God has revealed. Not that I'm right, you're wrong. God is right. We're all wrong. We've all sinned, man. We we've all messed up, and uh, we've all felt the 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 burn marks and the scars of sin. 
and the um, atrocities of Satan. That's right. So if you were to stand in the, um, the gas chambers of Auschwitz for a few moments and contemplate radical evil, how about the, um, how about the Satanists that abducted the teenage girl? I saw the pictures only. I wish I could have been there. I wish I could have been there in advance. I saw the pictures of the girl. I mean, they um, they uh, they um, abducted, taken. They uh, they stripped. They sexually abused. They used in ritual. They eventually killed, cut off the head, peeled off the face and the skin. You know what I saw? You know what I saw at the training at Def Tech, a SWAT team training area, on advanced uh, occult crimes. Tom Wedge, the author of the book Satan Hunter, brought, brings all this in. There I'm sitting in the class. I got to see all these uh, videos and pictures of these crimes. And then I see the pink, just a pink head. Once a little girl, once a little, just a young, you know, once, once she was 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and somehow got away, teenager. And, um, her life is ended. I mean, the um, think in terms of the history of her life and all that's left in the video. I don't know about the rest of the body. I don't know if they had the rest of the body. Just a pink head of a teenage girl. Now, that's radical evil. That's satanic rituals. That's what they're doing. That's what they did in the Old Testament days. That's the atrocities of the underworld whether in the high places or deeply underground in the very hidden places worldwide. So we don't see this. We see biblically. We, see, um, we hear stories. If you work with the big victims, you may, you may see, you may hear more of uh, some of those. And that's important for all of us to hear it, to know it, and to realize it. Now, I know that we want to turn, and I believe that if I was at a conference, I have pictures that if I put up on the screen people might throw up they might fall out of their chairs they might go running out of the room <laughs> they may never listen to what i have to say again and yet there are pictures hundreds of uh, law enforcement slides we still have so i'm going to tell you again the atrocities in the underworld to gain the powers of the dark uh, the spirits that's how they advance you can't advance the that satanic agenda without the powers See, we have a blood that has already been shed willingly by God in Christ. Jesus has done this for us. He has shed his blood. He's done all this. And that blood of Jesus liberates us. Whereas the sacrificial blood of humans liberate the demons, bring the demons across, the power demons. So whether you look at uh, 2 Kings 3 and the Moabite king and the, and the sacrifice of his own firstborn son to draw powers to weaponize dark powers or you can look at ezekiel 8 or well you can look at a lot of the places re-look at a lot of the places in the old testament uh, it's all over the place and then the the broader studies and then the nephilim and, and so all that's there but what's important to know is we look at the old testament and see some of the um Mode of operation, the M.O. of the dark side, of Satan, his methods, not unaware of his schemes, right? No backing down, no backing away. You're a believer. You're bold as a lion. You're, you're, not, gonna, you're not gonna back down from anything because why? I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Now I just read also in Revelation 12. When um, the great dragon, the huge red dragon, Satan, Revelation 12, that's Satan, that's him, the fallen cherub, and his collective, the angelos, the messengers, the, the ones that are with him, they fought against uh, Michael and his angels. The elect angels, the ones that are our sundulos, they are fellow brethren, they are fellow servants. They're our friends, believer in Jesus, they're our friends. I, I, I'll have Michael fight for me any day. I'll have my our friends, the elect angels who have never sinned, um, let alone there's twice as many of them as there is in the dark side. Do you understand the host of heaven? Do you understand the captain of the host, the man of war? Do you understand the warfare? Uh, hell, um, well, it's, it's all going to come down to it. But God is offering grace. God is offering mercy. That's what's going on today. 
all around us in the in the world that we're living in. Now, Satan's got and through sin, darkness, and and his um, escalation of iniquity, the abounding of iniquity. And that includes dark morality, all the perversions you can, you know, all the perversions they can think of. And then, well, how about the racism, race baiting? How about just simply foaming up frenzy among humanity? Personal civil wars, cultural civil wars, war, all the rest of that. It's all about the chaos. It's all about, you know, what you're seeing in society is because what's beneath the surface is rising. It's coming to the surface, and and this is um, it's it's the the days of sorrow. It's turbulence. It's pain to the world, but it's also uh, the precursor. It's not the end. It's the beginning of the end. But did you read right here? I mean, Revelation twelve. It's an it's an incredible thing. You got you know verse seven down. War broke out in heaven. Could you imagine for a moment at a war college the discussion here? Does um, any um, general, does any war uh, man think, uh, does anyone think that really uh, they know better than the angels of God? The war that broke out. So you can read it, Revelation 12, 7. The war breaks out in heaven, Michael, uh, the prince of Israel. Uh, we see we see him in Daniel coming in to blow the prince of Persia out of the waters to to bring the answers in prayer. So they're involved in spiritual warfare. They're involved in the um, the um, interruptions in prayer, spiritual warfare battles in the context of your answers. While well, the demons want to stop it, the fallen angels want to stop it, and God just sometimes sends His angels to break through. And that's what happened in in the book of Daniel, and. So Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The this is uh, he's that's like the picture of the the manifesting global manifesting full presence of Satan in the end of days. So the dragon, Satan, the fallen cherub, and his angels fought. They are fighting back, and uh, it it, it kind of gives you the picture here that God unleashes war against. The dark side, they should tremble, because the uh, the destiny of that is fixed. There's no threat, never has been a threat to the throne of God, to the presence of God, to His existence. The five I wills in Isaiah that the fallen cherub Satan, you know, uh, you call him Lucifer if you want to, uh, as he seeks to, um, he wants not just to dethrone, but to. Um, to eliminate, uh, that's the whole issue. The goal to eliminate the presence of God and for a finite corrupted being to take over. Really, has he done the math? That's where the insanity of sin. You can read about it in Ezekiel 28, you know, until iniquity was found in him. A willed, strongly willed insurrection against God and that that he, that he brought it to humanity I mean that's that's you know that's the, the, the reason for the humanity as it is even death go to a sim look at the cemetery and look at the gravestones wages of sin is death and I challenge the uh, geneticists in a good way have you found the death gene and even if you found the so-called death gene, do you have any mortal gene to splice in? No. God does. It's the person Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ. The gift of salvation. From the mortal God comes the gift of immortality. There's got to be a breaking of the sin power and the death issue and the Satan, Satan's control. If you don't um, understand that, uh, then you need to humble yourself to... Uh, listen. Go go get the Gospel of John. Dobre utra in Russia. Go get the Gospel of John in Russia. I want Mr. Putin. I want to ask him. I want to know the avenue of asking. I want to come to Moscow 
into the square. I want to preach the gospel of Jesus. I want to bring team members to pray for healing and deliverance. See, I believe anybody going there now may be a part of the ultimate vision that Hudson Taylor had of possibly some of the greatest revivals in human history occurring, igniting in Russia and going all over Europe. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Grace is grace. See, there's people out there that think that nobody deserves God's grace. There's Jonas out there. They don't want to be soul winners. They don't want to be witnesses. They don't want to go anywhere. They don't give a darn about Nineveh. You ever read the book, into the book of Jonah? You ever read where the, um, the reluctant witness, the reluctant prophet, the reluctant servant of God finally goes? He had to go through a lot. How was the whale's breath anyway? You know, finally he goes and takes the message of God that God willed and wanted. You know why? You ever read the end of the book of Jonah? Because God cared about 120,000 people and even their cattle, their commerce, and so forth. He cared about it. He would rather save a wicked city than to judge it. God would rather, you know, he would rather save the wicked in America, in Russia, in China, in all the places of the world. He would rather save, even some of you Satanists and Luciferians that listen. God would rather save you, but if you, you know, you want to, you want to trample the blood of Jesus, insult the Spirit of Grace. That's on your head. One day in hell, I do believe you'll regret it. Now we look at also Revelation 19.19. This is on the uh, live notes, by the way. If you look at the live notes, we are on page 23. I've added. These are the appendix pages. I don't know how long I'll go on this subject matter because I don't think you're going to find any. You're not going to hear it in a pulpit. You're not going to hear it you know, in, in too many radio. Bro- you know, I've been interviewed by probably 100 radio stations over the last 10 years. All those conferences and everything else. And we're, we're scratching the surface of getting out the information. 150 million victims of satanic ritual abuse. And the splitting and the programming and the... Uh, and, it, and it all comes in the source. Hell's Kitchen wants godmen, wants super soldiers, has to have them. Revelation 19.19. When you when you when you you may see two hundred million globally, you may see the um, Middle East and Israel and especially Jerusalem um, swarmed by augmented super soldiers in the very end. So if you if you go a little bit in the future, could be seven years away, could be fifteen years away. I don't know, but I do know this: the glimpse that God gives us of the most powerful militaristic system in all of human history, all of it put together, it can include all of the things that uh, the, the, the military systems, DARPA, all the rest of them, all of what they've wanted. They, it, can, it can include all of that. But what they're not understanding is, uh, um, the demand in Scripture is, it will include demonization, diamondizoid, uh, it includes the, the this army taking the mark, the karagma, and also um, worshiping the icon of the Therion, uh, the image of the beast that the false prophet breathes a demon into. It becomes alive and it can kill. It's weaponized. And in and, and my, my, um, my opinion, it's weaponized artificial intelligence an artelect. What are the um, weapons going to be used? Do you know Revelation 19.19, the end game? Do you know the um, ultimate culmination? If you think in terms of the spiritual warfare battles that you go through as a believer, and then you look at the world as a whole, then you understand that um, Nazi ideology was satanic doctrine, and look where it led them. Look at the, the camps. Look at the look at the occult secret doctrine. Look at all of it, and the um, and hell's uh, 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 what do you want to call this um, infusion and beginnings of eighty years ago or so. The Godmen, a super soldier army, uh, they declared two hundred million were needed. 
conquer the world, maintain it for a thousand years. So I'm going to tell you again, biblical scripture prophecy demands, it, it tells you there, there, there can be no new world order, new antichrist. They can't do anything without the soldiers. And the development of those augmented super soldiers, if not half hybrid oriented, have to has to go. It, it's got to go on for decades prior. They got to be there on a multi continental basis before before the red horse, black horse, pale green horse prophecies can actually occur on the planet. They've got to be here. Uh, the, the last seven years and the control of that uh, terrifying, thundering system that Daniel talks about under the little horn. It speaks boastfully. He has eyes that look like the eyes of a man. Now, this again, you're not going to see it on any of the regular channels and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to hear it there because um, it's not there. The world can't tell you when it's blinded. Um, subjugated or subnormal carnal Christianity can't tell you because they're just going around licking their wounds and living in uh, powerlessness and uh, neglecting so great a salvation. And we got to pray them out of that. Millions of them out of that. God never intended for that. And it's an outrage, and we should be praying just on that basis. Turn your churches, local church gatherings... Not four people on Tuesday night. Your gatherings into massive intercession, spiritual warfare uh, gatherings. Worship, praise, prayer. Um, you want God all over the place in your service. You want answers to prayer right in the surface. You want to be lit up. You want to see God moving. Do it God's way. If you don't do it God's way... You're not going to get God's hand in it. If you want to go off on your own mission and ask God to follow you, you got it backwards, friend. You know what? Uh, Matthew 6.33. His kingdom, his righteousness. First, all the other things be taken care of. If you get that backwards, you're going to struggle. You're going to be fretting. You're going to be frustrated. You're, you're going to be um, complaining. You come under the lordship of Jesus. No, you deny yourself. You take up the cross. You become the disciple under the, under the lordship of Jesus. You surrender. You believe. You obey. And God will pour out everything. Everything he promised. Everything he said. So if you want to be that kind of believer, the powerhouse, with all those enhancements that come from God... That's the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones, uh, the bold as a lion ones that, are, that we're supposed to be. So um, you got to realize that uh, when subnormalism becomes the norm, then all of a sudden uh, the real the real powerhouse of the church, well, that looks scary. That looks something w way out of our reach. You know, you've been living so... You've been living in the scraps so long. Come to the feast come to the feast in Jesus, his promises, his word. you got to do that. Now, I'm saying that for the sake of what we're going to say about Russia. When, when the, the battlefield, and you know how Russia got involved. You know the battle. You know, you know what, how many millions of Russians died. You know all that occurred in the conflict, uh, uh, in, in engaging the Russians and the Nazis and, and the battle there. But you also know this, when they came to Berlin and the Russians were there, where did this work? The scientists didn't. It wasn't just Operation Paperclip in the United States. See, all of those secret doctrines and teachings and demonic sciences and, and agenda and presence and all that massive unveiling of, of that dark side presence went with everyone that embraced those Nazi doctrines, secrets, science, and um, those possibilities. So the Brits, the United States, Canadians, all the other ones, but the Russians. You know um, what we've done in the last uh, 40 years, engaging satanic ritual abuse. Now, we've been to Germany, we've been to Vadelsberg Castle, we've been to Poland, we've been to Geneva, Switzerland, we've been to France, we've been to Scotland, we've been to Canada. We, you know, we've, we've engaged this over the world. We've engaged and talked with folks from all over the world. 
and we'll be doing more and more of that. And I'm going to tell you again that it does matter that I talk about this. One, because honestly, you're not, you probably never heard, some of, even some of the, some of the scripture and teaching and prophecy, as I, and I say this on the basis of experience, of 130 conferences, except for two weeks ago when I only got to be there for a little bit. By the way, just those who questioned, uh, very healthy, working out every day, riding the motorcycle, doing the stuff, getting a couple of the doctors to check some things to make sure. Thank you for the prayers because I tell you that I felt them and felt God's hand and presence. It reminds me again of uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. That in those dire circumstances, but you help by the prayers and deliverance came in God. Um, not that we wanted to miss uh, what we the content I wanted to give you two weeks ago on Saturday at Coach Dave Don Meyer's conference uh, on expelling darkness. Well, we wanted to give you Powerhouse. The book will be out, and I'm going to try to do four or five actual video training to give to what I, you know what I wanted to do down there. I want to give to you. I want to give it to Dave, you know, Coach Dave, to, to send out to you. But either way, I'm, I'm, it's all intertwined um, in what I do here because it's important. Uh, Russia is vast. Russia has this massive history. You know, when I read some of the history and the Cossacks and everything else, and you you go to Rasputin and you can go to uh, um, just a lot of history, and I see a people that have been uh, in war a lot, Stalin, the purges. Uh, Marxism, Lin, all the battles, everything, and then up to today, Putin, the rise of the new Kazakh, Kazakh warriors. You don't think um, Russia wanted? It's not just the nuclear area, the missiles, the 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 uh, Cold War, not just that. But as the Cold War went on, and the concerns, and as a kid. We had those drills where we had to, you know, go down to these basement areas, these bomb shelters. Remember, the Russians were going to get us, and they had, they probably had the same thing. And then, you know, it just held off because there's a broader, bigger God's sovereignty and mission is bigger than man's stupidity and sins and and warfare and the rest of it, and blocks Satan from bringing total destruction. He limits the work of Satan. You see that in the Book of Revelation clearly. Revelation 9. And so when you um, think of the Soviet Union, all these years we thought about all the satanic richly abused, that is, with the agenda to turn them into God-men, servants of the uh, coming Antichrist, servants of um, a new world, a Luciferic. There's no new, there's no such thing as a secular new world order. There is um, straight from Hell's Kitchen in all of its plotting, all of its planning, all of its incrementalism. The frog in the kettle approach, I think 50s and 60s maybe. And I think it's kind of bursting out in the 60s and all the literature that came and all that kind of stuff too. But see, what was happening here in the United States and, 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 and the United Kingdom, see, I think the belly of the beast in Germany was already sunk spiritually. And uh, England has uh, been um, drawn into being sunk into paganism and dark powers, and 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 you you, you see the um, you see the 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 spirit of antichrist's resistance now stronger there, but it's here all over the United States, and you you, you, you there's no question you've seen it. in just read um, Wombrunt's book, Marx and Satan, and and uh, the persecution of believers. In, in Russia, believe it or not. The uh, unbelievable persecution. Atheistic communism, the Marxism, you know, how do you deal with the Christians? The tip of the bayonet. So whether you look at um, that history, and, 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 and it is a sad history. A stall in the purge, that's, that's horrific, I think, history. And yet uh, there's a nation. They want to be their nation. They want to be, you know, Putin wants to do, he wants his people. And so there is a, a superpower next to another uh, superpower that ultimately wants to be the superpower of the world. So that Russia and, you know, and, and, you know, and, and, and China kind of join in their adversarial, you know, political um, uh, uh, attack or whatever else against the United States. Well, you know, once all that goes down, do you think China's going to let? Uh, they're not going to be buddies with Russia. 
ultimately. See, there's more to the play of all this. Uh, in uh, Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38, there is predictions of the um, Asian uh, uh, contingent of uh, warriors in the Middle East. There's a prediction of Russia, the joining of our Iran and, and, and coming against Israel and their utter destruction. There's all kinds of massive, massive prophecy. And let me say to the intel folks, it's um it's it's uh, written in infallible unchange you can't it's it, it, it's indestructible you can't change this now some will argue argue with me I love to have discussions on this subject matter the future tomorrow's not here yet see when we think of the biblical prophecy and all the rest of it we we get the, there are there are those that get the concept of fatalism it's all done so what do you do no um, part of prophecy demonstrates and shows you the advance of the church and the cause, the shaping of history, the interventions in history, what's going to happen, even when wrath, the wrath of God is poured out on the beast kingdom because of the prayers of the saints. So I want you to realize tomorrow actually is not here. Now, in prophecy, we have the actuality all the contingencies, all the possibilities, may, maybe it's a trillion things that could happen, um, and what some people want to happen, don't want, all those things. But when God brings a picture of the future, he gives the ultimate final actuality. Now, we know those things. They should inspire us. In our walk with Jesus, our love for God, the, um, it talks about the immensity and fallibility of God, and so forth. But it also tells us where it's all going and uh, the presence and power behind the vast deception and destruction of humanity and the environment. And without Jesus intervening, in, even in that, uh, we're, talking, we're talking the possibility of human extinction, environmental extinction, barring God, the Creator, the Savior, entering in cutting the day short. Now, as let's back up from all that for a moment and realize that our personal spiritual warfare, well, in Jesus, you have victory over world, flesh, and devil. You have demonstrative, powerful victory, and we're to be displaying that in our walk. And along with that comes the broader picture of the families and people. And, well, the mission, God wants to save people. He's pursuing Jesus said, I come to uh, seek and to save. Seek and to save that which is lost. Every single person that is saved, listen to me, listening to me right now, and I say welcome to all of you from over 170 nations. Welcome to you live as you listen today. Welcome to thousands and thousands that listen later on by the, uh, the podcast broadcast of the archives. Now, when I um, when I look at the world as a whole and God's uh, com- the great commission to get to every single human being, now that means all the apartment complexes and door to door and the streets. And, you know, there needs to be massive strategy by the church and how they're going to re- how they're going to do that and the empowerment. You're going to receive um, power, dunamis from on high and clothed in that power, filled with that power. And there's nothing greater. No, There's no magus, no sorcerer, no priestess, no psychic, no um, super soldier that has greater power than that. Mark down again for First John 4 and get a good study of that. Now, when I talk about this, as we live our lives, and, you know, mainly everybody's just going to work, getting your money, you know, right now in, in contemporary society, mask, no mask, uh, where did the pandemic come from, is there another one coming, what's happening in the world, the terrorism, the fighting, and all the um, all the other junk of hate, hateism that is out there right now. Here we are as believers in Jesus. We got a mission, no matter what. We got a mission, no matter what. Cha- whatever, whatever changes in the culture, whatever changes where we're living, same Jesus, same mission, same power, same passion, same will of God that none should perish. That's God. That, that's what He wants. And when uh, leaders and churches and people understand that, they become the indestructible force, uh, the that that powerhouse that the gates of hell. And what's coming out? See, what's coming out, what's being sent out in the agenda, targeting the political powers, targeting the military vision, targeting the wealthy elite, targeting and developing and inspiring the 
technologies that will need to be assimilated. The technologies that will be needed to be assimilated for a global uh, governing. And uh, the world has never seen that much demonic manifestation. What's coming? I mean, even right now, there's no, never been in human history this much globally. So let me say again... From the 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 nineteen thirties and the in the demonic the I think I think it's uh see uh Didache Satanus, the teaching and revelation and speaking and guiding those who would believe in augmenting humanity and wanting to create um well back breed to the you know the hybrids, the uh, the god men, small g. So again, you know that you know that agenda. They wanted god men, and the whole bottom line was they needed the soldiers, and their dream was we need two hundred million to conquer the world, to rule it for a thousand years. A lot of counterfeit in there when it comes to God's agenda in the millennium, right? Well, that was um that was a dark agenda. Um, manifesting through that Nazi ideology there, and you know, then, then again, the loss of the physical war uh, only extended um, those still embracing the black flame into all those parts of the world where the rise... And let me just say this, in all the parts of the world where you have the rise of satanic, racially abused individuals, those are simply the tools of trauma uh, guided by the demonic realm, in uh, in altering and um, changing, mutating humanity, uh, simply forging humans into the um, servants, satanic chosen ones, select ones, uh, ultimately, and they know this, troops of Satan. They understand that very well. And, and, and so we've talked about it in, in, in all of you that listen in Canada. You've got it from one side to the other. Vancouver and British Columbia heavily all the way over to uh, the islands there. And you have it massively and heavy in Australia and New Zealand even and uh, obviously all of the United Kingdom and the United States, every city, every place. Where did it all come from? Where did you know that's you know it's one thing for psychologists to change and finally understand, hey, um, these human beings have had massive trauma and human the splitting of their personalities. And yet, you know, they're coming for help, but then you finally realize there's something more going on. They got parts of them that talk about clairvoyance, telekinesis, telepathy, powers, summoning, releasing, uh, twilight languages, uh, symbols that you don't even know what they mean. Their children are multiples, the children's children are multiples, the children's children's children, I mean, SRAs. More and more um, of that dark agenda to create Godmen. And, you know, I'm just, I'm going to say this is a, a guesstimate. I believe there's 50 million at least worldwide that are intact. That when they are triggered, the, everything on the inside that comes together and the powers that are there in those personalities join together, you're going to have the emergence of those who will do what the Red Horse Prophecy says and will lead into the black and pale green, hundreds of millions dead, slaughter everywhere, removal, the goal to remove as many resistors as possible just before a new order springs as if out of nowhere, but it's there. It's the puppet master. Well, the puppet master, they're part of that string they're not the puppet masters. I mean, they think they are. The elitists think they're actually the puppet masters. The closer you get to Lucifer himself, folks, the more deceived, blinded, and glazed over and consumed you are. You ever read there in uh, pastoral epistles in Scripture where it says, Satan has taken them captive to do his will. Captive to do his will. So the Russians, you know, everybody wanted, um, they all wanted the, the, the Nazi secrets. They all wanted it. They all went after it. They uh, So let me read this, and I think it's one of the good books. There's numerous materials, numerous books 
on um, the Russian Psy Warrior projects, and that's part of the whole um, OSS and, and the uh, CIA and all of them, MK Ultra. All of that was part of that dealt with response. Even the uh, remote viewers' development at Fort Meade responding to the Russian Psy Warriors, remote viewers, and all the rest of that. But it's not just that. It's you know, if you do a basic, and I can only I can only do this in a fifty five minute broadcast on this on Russia in in the context of satanic ritual abuse. H- how much can I give? So research is needed, and you can read numerous uh, you know the volumes that I've been reading lately. Phenomenon by uh, Jacobson is absolutely excellent when it comes to uh, what needs to be read, and I I think that is very important. That we uh, read that and, and and many others, by the way. So whether you read, um, but I want to I'm going to quote here from an older book, but I think it's important. I mean, if you want to read Western journalists Sheila Ostrander and Lynn Schroeder during their stay, and this is on the notes, by the way, during the stay in what was then the Soviet Union. Uh, Ostrander and uh, Schroeder traveled far and wide, interviewing numerous scientists who were conducting groundbreaking research in the fields of parapsychology. Now, please understand where this came from. They're all, they're all gathering this stuff from the Nazis who got it from Dadake Daemonoia, the demons, doctrines, um, Dadake Satanus. So you've got to see how deeply embedded the dark side was in that development among the Nazis, especially when it came to uh, the godments, the, the goal of the super soldiers. I mean, you can go look at Ivan Ivanov, and you can look in Russia concerning their, the, the, the attempts to bring hybrids of human beings and gorillas. I mean, you can go do the study, Ivan Ivanov. You can go do the study under Stalin. I mean, there's, there's those doctors that were attempting to bring crossbreeds and the goal, create Soviet super soldiers, hybrids out of humans and animals. Didn't work. It didn't work. I mean, I feel bad for the women involved, but it didn't work. But these folks that went to do their engagement. When Psychic Discoveries was first released, it was it caused quite a stir, sparking both public and government interest in psychic warfare. It had never been written. The U.S. government's fear of Soviet psychic mind control would probably not have reached the extreme that it did. Now, uh, that's, that's, again, psychic discoveries and, again, non-human enhancement. Do you think for a moment the, um, the global massive collective, the billions and billions and billions of fallen angels, demons, in their agenda, in their agenda to build that system, they have to have the warriors. Uh, it's in prophecy. It's in scripture. And there's boots on the ground of this. How do they do this? How do they get there? Revelation 19:19. How do they get there? Will it be will they create globally 200 million troops of Satan, you know, of antichrist? If they have the mark, the karagma, if they're worshiping the image, obviously they're demonized. Dark powers. Now, uh, the goal with the German Nazis were to create the hybrid kind of, um, well, ultimately, uh, backbreeding to Nephilim. Hybrid humanity, stronger, bigger, powerful, uh, cyclopean eye, uh, clairvoyance, telekinesis, powers, abilities. You can't do that without the demons. You can't do that without direct, straight from hell's kitchen, an operating presence. Well, read about that operating presence in 2 Thessalonians 2. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. Now look at the context. Satan is um, at work in the context of the, the coming of the Antichrist, who I would say strongly is complete hybrid. Fallen cherub to prepared woman in counterfeit to the incarnation. Now the world's not ready to hear that. And a lot of the, again, unbelieving world that can't lead you, the blind can't lead the blind. Jesus talked about that with the Pharisees. Uh, you, you, the blind can't lead. You can't go there and get the information. You can't go to the New Age movement. You can't go to the psychics. You can't go, you can't go to the source of dark and masqueraded demonic powers 
to get insight. You'll just get sucked in. Nations have got sucked in. Uh, Intel agencies, including the CIA, got sucked in. And Monarch, MK Ultra, all that's just a scratching of the surface of all of it. They got sucked in. And so if I'm telling you today there's 150 million worldwide, millions of these satanic super soldiers from the ages of 5 to 75 are in Russia. They're in Russia. And you can um, do a broad study, just Russia and satanic activity. You can see the Satanism, the growth of Satanism, the concerns of Satanism. You'll find an article that talks about the uh, National Security Advisor uh, making the statement a few years ago that uh, the greatest threat internally in Russia is not Islamic terrorism. It is the infiltration of Satanists into their military and law enforcement. So when they took all this information there, and again, I think because um, the the ability to communicate, the ability to say so, and as I broadcast this, and I did this a few years ago, I was mentioning Russia, I wanted an SRA from Russia to contact me, and they did. And parts of their, their personalities did also. So in Russia, you have from the 50s and the development of... Uh, the same process of uh, in, you know birthing, selecting and birthing, splitting, uh, forging personalities, programming personalities with the goal of creating spies, creating individuals that can have powers, creating individuals that can be sent, and ultimately warriors, super soldiers in Russia. You know, and you know, you can scale down the study. Look at uh, Wilfred Wong. I don't want to mention the others that are at the uh, in a very high level in England that know all this. And uh, we may uh, actually we may do some um, interviews with former high level law enforcement in the UK over this issue. But they're but as I told you before, the you know the uh, the United Kingdom is soaked. But we're dealing with the dark side needs to keep this undercover and continue to build because uh, the door's not open for them yet. The Antichrist is uh, still being restrained as of today. News article, put it on the front page if you want to. Second Thessalonians 2. Uh, the Anthropos Anamos. He is still being um, restrained. He can't get out yet. But the guarantee is that when he does, White Horse, the conquest, he's released a succession of global tsunamis, in a sense, of the of the massive bloodshed, blood, you know, the savazzo, the ritualistic blood bloodletting. As I was, ex- it was explained by some of their warriors over the years to me that the Black Awakening, the Red Horse event, the bloodshed is ritualistic. And it will draw more demons. You know how they compared it to me? They, this is what they said. This is what they said. They said it's like having, you know, you had your Pentecost. You had where God poured out powers and miracles. And he did all what, you know, your God did this. But when our day comes, when the great triggering occurs, when the great release occurs, when that event of the Red Horse that they define as a black awakening globally, the, the triggering of the coming to full possession and uh, the programming and all the rest of their, uh, this, this, they, they will be unleashed. And if you read the prophecy, the content of this, which 99% of all Christians don't know, Red Horse Prophecy, hundreds of millions worldwide will die in a bloody slaughter. Svadzo, ritualistic slaughter. And it will lead to the Black Horse collapse and on and on. Now, it, it all leads the chaos... See, we all say it simply. It's all in all the books all over. Whether secular writers, conspiracy writers, or biblical prophetic writers, the the concept of a great chaos first, and then the arrival. See, they're, they're, the simply it simply is this. They're, they got it's they're clearing the way. The chaos is clearing the way for an unobstructed, which they they want it that way. The dark side, unobstructed uh, release. Revelation 13, the Anabano, the release of the beast system with the Antichrist in charge. 
and the darkest of power, the dragon, Satan, gives him the power, dunamis, throne, and authority. So if you're, if you're thinking in terms of military and political and, and anyone, uh, just um, trying to comprehend it in the secular fallen sense, you can't. Satan still has you. If you're really a researcher and you're on it now, go, go to Ephesians two, chapter two. Are you out of the darkness? Are you are you out? Has has Satan's authority over you been broken yet? It can only happen in salvation. So the non-human enhancements, the ability to remove you, is a sanitized version of astral projection. All the all the shamans. This goes way back. It, I, it might even go all the way back to Sumer. The ability of dark, dark side spirits to take people out of their bodies in that realm. But the use of it. Oh, they want it for weaponization. What kind? Listen, if you were Satan, what kind of soldier do you want to be on the ground that's going to be able to be superior to all the other soldiers on the planet, to be able to uh, a conquest of um, collapsing and then uh, stepping in to take over and control? One of the satanic super soldiers told me years and years ago, we will make Hitler's SS troops look like choir boys. One of those um, dark, empowered program personalities told me years ago, Russ, we smell Christian blood. The highly programmed, highly demonized, uh, right now intact, it's all submerged inside of them. It just takes an ultimate uh, triggering. Could it be like Revelation 16 where demons are released um, to go to the kings of the earth and trigger, draw, whatever? Bring them, gather them to Israel for the great day of God Almighty, Armageddon, Revelation 16. I mean, have you read that? You know that. That's real. That's, that's near and real future history. Now, let me read a little bit more here. Quote, it seems from the standpoint of of uh, conventional science, the concept of remote viewing cannot possibly exist. Unfortunately, there are numerous declassified CIA and DIA documents amounting to tens of thousands of pages which catalog the U.S. government's top-secret remote viewing program. First, hand cooperation about the U.S. military's secret RV projects comes from actual military remote viewers such as Joe McMoneagle, Lynn Buchanan, uh, and, and many others, David Morehouse, who I've talked to, and and some of the um, remote viewers that were trained to them, one that talked to me and I did an interview with, one from Fort Bragg that I engaged because the energy that empowered them to get out into the ether and to do what they do was surfacing. We commanded it to come forward. The energy was really the emanation of the entity, the spirit that was there. And we engaged the actual entity that empowered them to do with remote viewing. So if you read um, Ed Dames' book, Tell Me What You See, then you're going to read that he acknowledges that the source of their abilities from the Akashic Records, which the Bible calls the second heavens, the Epihurinos, Revelation or uh, Ephesians 6.10, down. That same realm where the principalities and powers are. So they're gathering their powers from that world. And if you're lost, you don't have the Spirit of God, and you're actually engaging that side, you are you are way out of your league, way beyond your pay scale. You can't comprehend. They are so superior to fallen humanity. Satan can um, can morph, met this kid's mind. He can turn himself into what looks like an angel of light, but it's not. It's a tactical move for deception. And and billions around the planet right now are um, drawn in by all of them. So you can continue to read all of this. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of right now, I'm just looking at the clock also today. Let me just read this part here. We'll see how far we get today. It's probably going to be that this will be part 20. Uh, uh, I, I believe that we're going we're gonna to probably take this into a two-part thing here. So this is part 21 of the SRA update, Russia. 
And we'll do uh, part uh, 22 on Thursday, in which we'll dig in a little bit more with these same notes, by the way. If you have the notes, and again, you can get them from shadowthedarkness.net, or you can get them from uh, uh, theragadageradio.com, and, and we're on page 23. I'm, I'm reading this uh, just a few quotes here. The documents are freely available under the Freedom of Information Act, and the author recommends that the serious researcher look at these papers. The concept that the superpowers engaged in an inner space arms race using psi warriors... Seems far-fetched, but sometimes truth is stranger than fact. It is alleged that both U.S. and Russian psychic warriors engaged in a secret paranormal war, remotely influencing and remotely killing each other. There is some mention of there being a uh, 70% failure rate in the training of remote influencers. These trainees being driven mad by hypnosis and drug regimens needed to induce the high-level psi abilities. David Morehouse. I've prayed for David. I've talked to David. I don't know if I'll ever get to him again. I love, I love you, David Morehouse. You know that I've talked to you. You know the background, backdrop of this. I pray for you. I, I've prayed by name for all of the major remote viewers. Because you've been drawn into some of the deepest decep- deception, the masquerading, uh, the non-human enhancements that are masquerated, whether as energies or entities that you you see them as they want you to. That's their tech. That's their tactical ability. Mentions this remote influencing program in his account of his military remote viewing training. Psychic Warrior by David Morehouse. It's it's a good study. I mean, I, all my t- all my team members. Year, when it first came out, I read it in one day. I gave it to the team members. We discussed it, and a Fort Bragg, a a Psy Warrior, gave me the phone number of David Morehouse, and I uh, contacted his home. And his home, I, I can't go to all the details. I don't want. I I I, I will not compromise anybody. Listen, tomorrow we're going to go over the Russians in satanic ritual abuse, the Russians in super soldiers, the Russians in future war. We're going to touch on Douglas Woodward's book, The Next Great War in the Middle East. We're going to touch on the Ezekiel 38 prophecy. The prophecy of Ezekiel 38. Do you understand? Russia's there warning to the Russian leaders and monitors and military and intel and Psy Warriors. There's a presence so big, so big, so so vast, so powerful that wants to draw you in, wants to use you to come down against Israel. And the prediction is that God's going to God's going to um, blow you out of the skies, out of, off the grounds. Do you, I, I, I want all the Russians to read and study deeply Psalm 83 and, and uh, Ezekiel 38. Two books I put on the notes, the page is 24. But we're at the end of the hour. Father, may you stretch out your hands to all of Russia. May you ignite the flames of massive revival that Hudson Taylor saw. May tens of millions... May it spread all over Europe that God, none should perish. Hundreds of millions to be saved. Our families, our neighbors, and all over our nation. Your will, God. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Stretch out your hands in great power. Ragged Edge Radio broadcast today. This is Russ Dizdar. Keep us in your prayers. Keep us in support. I deeply thank you for that. Love you. Good night. Good night.